There it is. Wow. Cool. Easy. Hey, Craig here. So in this video, we're going to be making the upper portion, the punch portion of the punch of the uh, blanking die set. Right? Okay, we're well, moving on to the punch. Um, I've already squared off and sized up the stock like before and uh, set my zeros on the top center here. Okay, that went pretty smooth. Um, now we're going to do the uh, finished pass. This is a 2D contour. Okay, this is the uh, the uh, finish, the bore finish. Almost, but not quite. Okay, well that worked there. Could have gone three thousandth over and it probably would have been fine, but uh, it was just a test die. So, right, let me uh, line these up here and be a little awkward doing it this way because they'll just fall through on the bottom here, but yeah. Looks like the alignment of the uh, pins is perfect. Um, but I think that edge in here, this edge right here, is messing it up. That's what's stopping it. So I'm going to have to remove that somehow. Oh, you know, I'm just going to use a I'm just going to use a file on there on the bottom part of it. Um which doesn't really matter that much. Just the the top edge is the important part. Next time I do this, I think I need to cut the initial part this eighth inch a little deeper. And then when I cut it from the other other side, it'll cut past that. And then I won't have that lip there. I should have done that. All right. Oh, 
it's pretty tight fit on the on the pins. Oh, okay, the, the pins actually pushed down a little bit. All right. Okay, so I'm so excited to see this thing work. Right, so I've got my uh, my die there, the two pins, got the stock in the center there. This is a 16 gauge aluminum. All right, got the punch set up. I'm gonna use a couple of steel blocks on top of that. Now this should only require uh, 16 tons. I didn't actually mark the center here. Let's see how this works. Uh, this should only require 16, uh, sorry, nine tons of pressure for this aluminum. I think it's, I don't remember what it was for uh, 16 gauge steel, maybe 18 or something. It's kind of pushing the limits of this is a 20 ton Harbor Freight press. I'm going to try to get this in the center as best as possible. If I don't have it in exactly the middle, it may try to push, make, start binding on the pins. So, okay, well, here it goes. See what happens. Okay, well, it was actually a, a combination of binding. That was part of it. Um, but it was also these pins. These pins stick up, and I had the blocks turn the other way. So let me push it down the rest of the way here. Okay, well, I would take it into the shop to uh, video it to show it, but I think the, the part's going to drop out the, the, bottom right of, the bottom right away here. So... Okay, right. lift this off. There's the material. And there's the part down below. Cool. And uh, actually, this would normally be done um, before, but. Okay, we're gonna try a 16 gauge steel here. Uh, I'm not sure if this is gonna work because it's so close to the tonnage of the mill, but of the uh, press here, but we'll give it a try and see what happens. Oh, it worked. Cool, made a big noise, but it worked. Let's uh, pick this up. Let's see what happened. All right. There it is. Wow. Cool. Easy. Okay, well that was actually easier than I thought. That was actually more successful than I thought it would be. Um, the uh, actually one thing I did learn is when you're when you're blanking, the burr is actually on the top side. Uh, when you're when you're piercing, uh, it's on the uh, it's on the bottom side. So um, I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to be deer burring that anyways. The, uh, the burr on that is very, actually very little. You can barely feel it, so that's actually uh, easier than the machine. This side requires uh, no deburring, so the deburring process is going to be much easier doing this. Um, Alright, cool. Well, I'm not going to... You can see the, the material, leftover material is on there, but... Um, I'm not going to remove them. This is just a temporary die. Okay, so the next step is to move on to the actual die set. The, the die set is actually the, uh, the, the top plate and the bottom plate 
And these actually, things like this are actually going to mount into the die set. Um, I, I mean, I guess the whole thing is a die set, but I'm going to be making a um, interchangeable system where I can actually have different sizes of punches and dies that mount into it. Um, now, I checked the prices of these die sets. They're actually upwards of five, eight, ten thousand dollars for a die set. Um, so this is going to be way cheaper doing it myself. Uh, the the critical thing on this, of course, is going to be uh, the accuracy. I mean, the uh, the Tomrock, the 770, was very accurate in this. You can see. Um, I mean, we're within thousands on the pins here, and it aligned perfectly. And the alignment on the actual die itself. I mean, you can see there's like almost no burr. So. Um, all right, well, future the videos to come, uh, making the upper and lower uh, plates, um, and of course, all the dies. All right. All right, well, if you like this video, I'd appreciate the thumbs up. Uh, feel free to leave any comments in the comment section down below. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, there should be a link over here. Uh, also, if you'd like to support us on Patreon, there should be a link over here for Patreon. Uh, also some videos over here you might like to watch, and as always, thanks for watching.